What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and when I was at LTX 2018, a fan came up to me and handed me these graphics cards and said, hey, you wanna make a video about trying to fix these? And I was like, what's wrong with them? And basically he was like, they're those Chinese knockoff brands. And I was like, oh, okay, well, challenge accepted. And I feel like a jerk, I forgot your name. I wanna say Craig, but I don't think that's right. But you know who you are. So anyway, we're gonna try out both these cards and see if we can't make them actually work. I fully expect this to be a failure, but yeah, anyway, good content, hopefully nonetheless. This card literally, literally looks like it has rust on it. Yo dude, what are you doing? Shopping for a case for my new build. What are you looking for? I want something designed for water cooling. Fractal design to find S all the way. Check it out. Plenty of airflow, plenty of open interior for water cooling, radiator support. It even has mounts for your reservoirs. I don't have enough room for my hard drives. Okay. Fractal design R5. Look at all those hard drive cages. And you can fit your radiators and water cooling in here. No, I got a lot of hard drives, but I also have an EATX motherboard. Okay, I'm gonna try something here. Okay. Bear with me. You might wanna stand clear. Ugh. Never actually tried this before. Okay. <laughs> it worked. Fractal design defined R6. You can fit all your radiators, a crap ton of hard drives, and it fits EATX. Dude, this is perfect. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh. Okay, so both these cards are fairly old generations. This one's actually labeled GeForce GTX 500 series. High speed GDR, GDDR5 memory with an arrow pointing to, I guess, where the memory would be, like in there. Fermi 2.0 GPU inside. Yeah. GPUs usually go inside the card. But check this out, this is actually a Galaxy card, but it's got this flip down fan so that you could actually clean the heat sink. So this isn't actually a, really a Chinese knockoff, but it definitely is a used second hand, who knows what it's been through card. But this is Galaxy, before they changed their name to Galax. This card here, he said basically it will run for about 30 seconds and then shut off. Uh, and like just completely die, no signal anymore. So I'm expecting this to probably be cooler related. This one, is completely unidentifiable. This this is straight up a knockoff fake NVIDIA card. I mean, look, even the stickers are crooked. Um, this actually looks like those Arctic fans though, like because you could actually buy aftermarket Ar Arctic coolers. That's what this looks like. The PCB is like completely warped. So here's the thing with this card. He says it works perfectly fine if you just let the basic VGA driver do its thing. Like if Windows detects it and installs a VGA driver, then it's fine, but as soon as you install any sort of NVIDIA driver, then the card just completely stops working. So I need to see if I can't try and maybe GPU-Z to see if this card has any sort of identification, but this is gonna be the hard one, I think. So we're gonna start with what I think is easy, and that being the 550 Ti. Now before I start tearing into it, I obviously need to kind of verify the, the issues. So, I mean, I, I halfway expect this to just suddenly work, fine, which always seems to be the case, right? You have a problem with your car, you take it to the mechanic, it doesn't do it for the mechanic, but the second you drive away, the problem comes back. I, I kind of expect that to be the case here. I mean, he did say that this card worked for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna see if the other card will work. But if this one doesn't work, then I'm gonna plug in another graphics card, wipe the driver entirely, and try from there, but. I really don't think I'm gonna get either of these cards to work. Oh my God, listen to that. It sounds like a lawnmower. Holy crap, that is so bad. Oh, we have a signal though. <laughs> so let me stop you right there because if you look closely, Phil noticed while editing this video that it popped up on the screen momentarily and identifies as a GTX 650 Ti. Keep that in mind because I can promise you this is not a 650 Ti, and it will all sort of make sense later. But um, yeah, back to the show. <laughs> it's actually booting. Okay. Um, so obviously the driver didn't like fully apply, which is why we're seeing this crazy uh, scaling, but that's good. As long as it doesn't try to reinstall its own driver right now, I'm fine with that, which it shouldn't because we are not hooked up to the internet. I want to see if, uh, do I have a GPU-Z on here? Derp, I don't have GPU-Z on here. Crap. So I guess I'm gonna have to plug in the internet. 
So GPU-Z is a very important tool that I use. Anyone that does anything with graphics card testing and stuff should download GPU-Z because it will tell you everything. It'll tell you BIOS versioning. It will tell you, it'll identify the core if it actually can be identified. And that is what we want. So, because I mean, oh, it just tried to install the driver on its own, which I thought might happen once we plug in the, so it's doing exactly what he said it would. As soon as it sees an NVIDIA driver, black screen. So the way I'm getting rid of the display driver and just trying to get everything working from scratch, which is by the way, the very first line of repair I always tell people to do when they are dealing with graphics issues is completely wipe all traces of the driver and start from scratch. Remember when you install NVIDIA drivers and even if you click clean install, there's various things that will overwrite. There's some files it leaves in place and just writes on top of. Disp our DDU or display driver uninstaller will remove every trace of the driver and give you a clean start. So that's one of the things we're gonna do right now. I wanna get to the point to where we're just with the basic VGA driver so that we can see what's happening. Because what I think might be happening with this graphics card is I think it might be lying as to what it is, which means that the driver is installing because Windows or, or NVIDIA is doing its driver check and it's like, oh yeah, this, I, this hardware is identified as yada yada and so we're gonna go ahead and install it. And then it doesn't work because the driver is not driving it properly because it thinks it's one thing and it's actually another. So display driver uninstaller is pretty simple. Download it, update it, because it will check for updates. Um, it recommends that you do this in safe mode. We're doing it in the regular desktop. I just do the clean and restart option. It's gonna create a restore point and then it's gonna remove the driver and reboot. And then when it reboots, it is going to go right into uh, the standard VGA mode. I'm also gonna uninstall or remove our network cable. That way we do not deal with it auto installing again because the next thing we're gonna try and do here is actually disable the auto driver install function built into Windows. All right, so if you wanna stop Windows from, un or from installing drivers on its own, you can just Basically go into the search, type in advanced system settings. Where is it? Uh, view advanced system settings right there. Go to the hardware tab. Go down here to device installation settings and then switch that from yes recommended to no, your device might not work as expected. Now, I wouldn't leave this on by default all the time because this means when you plug in things like keyboard and mice and all that, if it does have to do some sort of driver initialization or basic functionality for input output joystick game devices, it may not work. So this is just for temporarily. But if you for some reason are working on it and you want it to stop installing the driver on you, like we just dealt with with this guy, then that is what you want to change. Let's see if GPU-Z can actually uh, detect it now. Okay, so looking up the device ID, we've definitely got some clues here because we were seeing some conflicting information. Now, here's the thing. It's a 10DE, which means NVIDIA 0626. That's basically the device ID. And when we look that up, we actually come back with a GT, HP GT1030, 768 megabyte, and then the BIOS information, right? 10DE626, which is exactly what our ID is. The problem here is that it states that this is a GDDR4 with a 256-bit memory bus, which does not correlate with the 1030. That correlates with the 9600, at least a lot more closely, although that's a GDDR3. So what we are suspecting is happening here, we have a GT1030 with possibly a 9600 BIOS installed. Uh, what we can't figure out is why it worked momentarily. Okay, so we decided to go ahead and look up the drivers for the GT10, or I keep saying 1030, the GT130, and what we found out was they actually stopped driver support in 2000 and something or another. 16. 16, yeah, because 342 dot whatever is, uh, or 342 dot is the last driver that supported this card. So if it tried to load our 398.11 onto this card, it, it obviously wouldn't have worked. So we just installed the driver for this card and then what we actually experienced was Windows identified it immediately and was like, hey, new display driver found and, or new display device found. We're like, oh, that's cool. So what we got to do now is I'm just going to restart. I'm going to leave it in the, the slot that it's in. I'm still going to run off the iGPU and I want to see if GPU-Z will actually identify the card. It's all identified now. NVIDIA, GeForce, GT1030. But now it says GDDR3, but it says 384-bit. I don't think that's right. And weren't all the GT130s showing 760 megabytes? And this says we have two gigs. Heaven time. I'm not gonna run 4K 8, 8X MSAA though. That, that's probably asking for a, a, a bit of a... Why not? You wanna run 4K 8X? Fine. 
We will try 4K. 8X. Hey, six. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to... <laughs> it's one though. Oh, hey. Something tells me this is still a less than playable experience. <laughs> I can't even get the mouse to show up. So although we got it to work by simply just installing the proper driver, it's still a counterfeit card because it's got like a mix of 9600 GT and GT 130 specs kind of mixed together because as you can see here, 16 ROPs and 64 TMUs here in GPU-Z, but we're only seeing 48 CUDA cores on the actual specs. This is expecting to see 768 megabytes of standard memory config. This is saying it has two gigabytes of GDDR3 this is expecting to see GDDR2 and 192-bit bus, where this is showing 384. So yeah, at this point, we pretty much figured out that it was either a 9600 GT or a GT130, and we pretty much are assuming the reason why that it wasn't working is because it's actually identifying as a GTX 650 Ti, which it's not, and that's why none of the drivers were working, because the drivers that support that card are not actually supporting the 130 or the 9600. So yeah, it's still a counterfeit card and who knows what's on there. And I'm not gonna start trying to flash BIOS and stuff on there because I don't think at the end of the day it's really gonna matter. Now we gotta see if we can't see what's up with this guy. All right, I don't expect this to work. I think this card is just straight up dead. Okay, this time it actually identified because not only does it have the proper 10DE1244 1B4C A002, um, the other one just, that's how we know the other one's still counterfeit because it didn't have any of the other identifying numbers. Maybe I should install the 550 Ti driver first <laughs> based on the first part. Load VGA BIOS. Well, that's gonna have to be for another time because I can't load the BIOS. NV Flash won't let me do it. It says it's not an NVIDIA graphics card and it says it's not an NVIDIA graphics card because it doesn't have a BIOS on it. And I can't get a BIOS on it because it won't load. Because it won't load because it's not a NVIDIA graphics card because it has no BIOS. Sometimes this works. It's rare, but there, fixed it. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I do like playing with broken hardware here and then. Um, this thing never worked. He said it never worked. And yeah, so anyway, God, that's a flexible cooler. Holy crap. All right. Ah! <laughs> ah! Okay. The sacrifice has been made <laughs> to, the, to the PC guys. It fought back. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. It really hurt.